practice some things out and question some things in the last video. And I really appreciate it because I did not actually notice uh, last episode. You know, like I've mentioned before, when you're playing a lot of times, especially when you're, you know, commentating over your, your gameplay, uh, it can be easy to or easier to miss things. Uh, so, you know, you guys have a much more uh, watchful eye being observers and uh, I appreciate you pointing out mistakes I make. The first one being right here. Uh, where this could have been a disaster. Luckily, this line was not actually connected yet and won't be for quite a while. Uh, but that would have mixed uh, plastic and red circuits, uh, which is something we don't want here. Uh, so that is very good that you pointed that out. Also, someone asked where the purple science was going, and the correct answer to that question is it's going to go on a new belt with uh, soon to come yellow science. However, I've made a mistake. I think in my rush to get it going and I've actually combined it on the blue science belt which is wrong uh, because the blue science is already combining with the military science. Thankfully, uh, due to the blue science already being backed up and siloed, we've actually not really created much contamination here. Uh, of course the purple science is contaminated on the belt here, uh, but there's some fairly easy ways we can fix this. I think probably the easiest is to set up the additional belt and then we're going to use our filter splitter feature here and we're going to filter uh, purple science on this side if I can pick that up or not um, there we go I didn't quite click the button correctly uh, so here we go now obviously we ran out of belt here but let's go ahead and dump these in uh, control right click Actually, we have quite a few science packs to dump in here. Just kind of spread them around a little bit. There we go. And we need to go pick up some belt, but we'll just do this until this is cleared off. And then, of course, we can get rid of that splitter now that we've uh, un undone that mistake. So the goal for today, we have a couple goals. Uh, first off, we need to get into some combat. Now, uh, maybe later on in the series, I will be doing that off camera because after a while, it uh, does become a little bit repetitive, I would say. And... Uh, you know, maybe not the most exciting thing to watch, but uh, I think a lot of people do struggle with combat. So I do still, I've showed it a couple times, but I do still want to uh, show it some more here, especially as we get some some new tools uh, at our grasp to actually, uh, you know, destroy bases uh, with. We don't quite have much of that yet, uh, but I, e even just the turret pushing as we have done, I think is definitely something I, is worth showing off uh, several times at least. We do have the ability to make modular armor, uh, just requiring steel and red circuits here. It's actually fairly cheap, and uh, really what's a, what that's going to do for us right now is just give us some more durability, which we really should have. We, in fact, don't even have uh, meat, uh, heavy armor built, which is steel here. Uh, but I think we can actually, since we accidentally uh, didn't get heavy armor, we can actually just skip that entirely since we can just jump straight to modular armor. And I might as well do that since we are going to get into combat soon. Uh, but also, um, I think I actually need to do some undergrounding here. Uh, but also, uh, I want to do that because I want to show you uh, something new that this modular armor introduces. And then the power armor after that will uh, continue with uh, in an even better form. So uh, we just finished our inserter capacity bonus, which is fantastic. Uh, I'll Go find, uh, we actually have some inserters here. Um, not too much to show off yet, uh, but this does add the bonus to them. Uh, we could potentially research another level of it. Although, uh, right now I think combat robotics would actually be interesting. Uh, so we can have combat robots in addition to uh, the robots we have working in our base and, and for us to build things, uh, we can have a combat robot. Uh, there, there's actually several types. This is the first type. Uh, so they are created from capsules and provide temporary help against enemies. Some robot types will follow you and others are stationary. Uh, so this particular one, the Defender capsule, is actually one that will follow us. And uh, this is, again, the most basic form of them. And they will... Uh, those will shoot uh, bullets, use ammunition, uh, just as we have been doing. Uh, later versions will use uh, different types of damage, uh, which is much better. They do much, much more damage. Uh, but to start out, these are actually quite decent. Um, we are being attacked fairly heavily here. Still not entirely sure 
where? I still want to say here, uh, even though it's a very odd uh, kind of pathing for them to take. Uh, so I'm going to try to grab a few red circuits because uh, while we can make this, you'll notice it takes 30 red circuits and we only have 24, uh, which means we technically have the materials to make this, but it's actually going to have us make red circuits by hand to make up for the rest of that, uh, which is not something I want to do. Uh, you, you'll start realizing that there's uh, a lot of these later game materials that even though you technically can craft them by hand, it's not something you probably want to do unless you have a lot of time on your hands where you don't need to craft anything else uh, because uh, it does take a while. There's, they're slow. There's a lot of intermediates. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. So once we craft this, uh, we're going to take a deeper look at it here, but I do want to uh, build some more turrets here to get ourselves a little bit better prepared. Uh, and then also one other suggestion someone had in the comments, which I think is a fantastic suggestion, uh, is since we are actually overproducing rails uh, here, we went over last time, if you recall, uh, that we actually really only need about two and a half of these machines. Uh, so we're making extra rail here by about half a machine production worth. Uh, so what we can do is we can do something very similar as we've done uh, with one of these with the ammo over here. Uh, is we can actually just extend this belt out a little bit and, and uh, use an inserter. We actually don't even need a filter inserter since this is just a rail uh, belt here and not, not a combined one. Uh, so we can take this and we can build a box because uh, we will start needing rail and we will need a fair bit of it. So I'm going to cap this to one row at the moment. Uh, it looks like we do have a bit of a shortage of furnaces and that is of course due to red circuits. Uh, that's mostly just the fact that they're slow. We, we really, as I mentioned, we do need to upgrade those. Uh, I'm going to grab some ammunition here. And we'll, we'll grab all 200 that is available. Uh, so now if we shift click this out, uh, we can one one nice thing uh, that they've added in 1.0 that I want to demonstrate. This is this is new for me too. Uh, is if you go into a certain menu. So right now we only have crafting and character. Here once we unlock logistics, we'll also have a logistics menu. Make sure we can handle this attack, barely. Uh, it will, whatever you manipulate within your inventory, it will use correctly based on the tab you're in. So uh, like, for example, if I have a box and I go in here and I control click, it's going to put everything it can in there. Uh, however, if I go into character menu and control click my inventory, it's going to put in um, everything that it can into these slots. Now, it I think it, it should default to the higher level armor. I'm, I'm not sure why it defaults to the lowest level one, uh, but uh, it will, it, as you saw, put in armor. Uh, we, can, we can just temporarily stick that in there and then do this again. And you can see uh, it's only putting in what can actually go in here. We actually have a pistol and such here. Uh, which we don't really want uh, and we can i think i showed this already but we can filter uh, these slots so if i middle mouse button uh click on something that's already here it will filter it to that i believe uh, yeah so it'll only allow shotguns to go here and only allow shotgun ammo to go here i believe we've done the same with the ammo here and the gun here and uh, that's really nice so when you die or if you you know, deposit it somewhere and then go pick it up. It will go, uh, you know, right back in those slots you actually wanted it to go in, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, I think some bullet damage would be really good. And we can actually test out some defender capsules. So I'm going to just cancel that really quick. We don't, shouldn't be making all those gears. Uh, let's make a few of these. Uh, they, they, these, like I said, these are not incredibly strong. They definitely help, uh, you know, as, as you would expect. Any extra damage helps. Uh, but I think they're definitely better in, in higher numbers. Uh, so let's go and venture out here. I'm going to shift, uh, I'm gonna go to my combat bar here. We have some fish, perhaps picking up some more would be smart. Uh, I'm gonna shift, or yeah, shift right click my ammo here to put some more in my hot bar uh, because I want to quickly be able to transfer it to turrets. Uh, now, when I went out in combat in my streams, in my stream playthroughs, I had uh, quite a lot of people ask me Actually, the question came up a lot, how I am quickly transferring ammunition to my turrets uh, when I place them and just doing it so so quickly. And I want to demonstrate that for you here. I think I've done it on a smaller scale already in this playthrough. Uh, but what we're going to do is we have these, of course, assigned to our hotkeys, number one being the turret, number two being the ammunition. And uh, just really quickly to walk you through the process before we do it, 
and I'll walk you through it kind of afterwards and maybe during if I can. Uh, we're going to hit one. And we're going to click and hold down click and drag to place all the turrets down really quickly when we, and when we get up there. And then we're going to hit two to switch to the ammo and uh, just spike these guys here for myself. And then we're going to control right click to put half of what's in my hand in each turret. And we're just going to hold control and right click and drag over the turrets and we'll deposit the ammo throughout them. Now it won't be entirely even since it is cutting it in half every single you know, deposit. Uh, the, the last turret will have less and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, that is how we're going to do this really quickly. So uh, to show you that in action, we're going to walk up here. And I, depending how this works, sometimes I like to walk up and just clear out the biters that are here first. Like right now, I've aggroed them. I'm just going to shoot them myself so I can kind of get up closer to put my turrets. Save myself some steps. So we're going to do that and that. And I did it exactly how I walked you through it. Um, is I hit one uh, and just click dragged down to uh, place them and then I hit two to switch to my ammo very quickly and then click and then hold control and right click and drag over the turrets to have them place the uh, have them place the, the ammo in there so that's how we're doing that uh, this is a bit of a bigger base so this one could be a bit more of a challenge I think we were, perhaps should deploy these so what we do with these defender capsules we can look at their statistics here everything has a statistic pretty much um, if it actually has one, it will display it, I suppose is a better way to say that. And uh, this one will spawn out one defender. Uh, some of these capsules, the higher level ones, will actually uh, send out multiple robots per capsule here. And uh, they have a lifespan of 45 seconds. They have a range of 15, a shooting speed of 3 plus 0.3 a second. Damage is 8 plus 1.6 and speed is 2.2 kilometers an hour. If you compare this damage, um, uh, it's 8 plus 1.6 opposed to, so it's it basically matched to our ammo, actually. Uh, so they'll basically do the type of the amount of damage we're doing. So this will actually be quite good. Uh, just to clarify as well, the range for throne is obviously different than the effect. So the range for throne is this green circle. This is how far you can throw them. Uh, and, and then the range listed down here is the range of the actual robots. Um, and then the shooting speed for throne is just how fast you can throw it, basically. Um, for these ones that follow you, uh, you don't necessarily really need to worry about this too much, this range, because they're going to follow you, so even if you throw them out here, they're going to kind of just come back to you, but uh, I think we may actually be able to get away with one. Uh, if they do the same amount of damage we do, you saw that we were uh, quite quickly, you know, shredding through the robot, uh, sorry, the biters here. On second thought, uh, we did just spawn medium biters, you saw kind of a bigger red guy there. Uh, that like this guy right here. This is a medium biter. They have higher resistances, especially to uh, physical damage, uh, which is what we're doing. And uh, it's it makes it a bit harder. I'm going to eat a fish just in case here. So we did manage to push into this. Uh, the robots are helping, of course. Now with the robots, um, I may not necessarily need to use turrets, but I think perhaps that would be a smart thing to do. Uh, you do see that several, um, you know, there was a bit of damage. These robots aren't particularly tanky, uh, so, you know, they, they certainly can die uh, pretty easily, in fact. But you can see they're just shooting me, or shooting uh, for me, rather. And uh, we took out that base fairly easily. So I did have, uh, you know, a lot of people, I've had a lot of people in the comments throughout this series ask about combat and, you know, how, how to pursue it. And uh, hopefully this is showing you uh, the, con the the robots aren't something I normally use a lot, but they are actually quite good at this stage. Um, these defender ones will fall off pretty hard once we start getting a higher number of medium biters. We only have a couple now uh, spawning in groups, but once we start, you know, once it um, starts transitioning to about half medium biters or even more than half, because as evolution goes up, it spawns more and more of the higher types, and then it'll hit a threshold for the next level etc. And uh, that, you know, once we get to that point, these won't be nearly as effective. And hopefully by then we will have the uh, next version up. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, at that point, also in the not too distant future, we should be able to get tanks. In fact, I think we can technically already unlock tanks. Uh, it really only requires blue science. We just haven't quite gone down that te uh, tech path yet, which we could do because a tank will help you a lot. The tanks are you know, as you would imagine, a tank is incredibly, uh, well, tanky, and uh, it, it will just help you, 
you know, kind of survive a lot longer, and, uh, and also, it, it is really quite good for combat, because it'll, uh, you can actually just run over bases with it, and it will basically one-shot them. Now, it does damage the tank, of course, um, but it does, uh, it will just one-shot worms and bases if you just, just run into them. Uh, so you do have to keep an eye on your tank's health. We'll show that once we get there. Uh, but hopefully this is helping you, uh, you know, w with some ideas for combat and, and how to uh, handle things. I do plan to do a video specifically on that, like a standalone tutorial uh, on basically what I'm showing here. In case people, you know, didn't see it in this or just want even more details. Uh, now this base is not in our pollution range, but it's getting close. So I'm going to destroy it and then we'll head back to base and actually work on production. Uh, but I do want to be proactive in this process and, uh, you know, just so we don't have to come back out here in 15 minutes. And I'm just going to do that. I'm actually going to place these right in the middle because that way they can just reach all of the bases very easily. And there we go. And, uh, again, I think, uh, I think you, you gain a lot and actually have a pretty big advantage when you don't panic. I think... I think, uh, you know, a lot of times I will still panic. It's it's really easy to panic in these situations. Like, you know, I just ran in the middle of the base and placed my turrets and, uh, and, and was taking damage. And when you see that your screen flashing red and the bar going down, uh, it's, <laughs> you know, it's um, it's it's kind of panic-inducing. Uh, but I think by not panicking, you, you can uh, actually gain a lot of ground that way. And that will just come with practice. Uh, you know, I've played enough personally to where uh, most of the time, I can kind of gauge, you know, how much danger I'm actually in, and I realize there that uh, I was really in almost no, uh, you know, serious danger. That there was not really any way I was going to die there. Um, so that just comes with practice. Now, now it's not to say like I'm invincible or, or anything. I have definitely died. I've definitely made mistakes. I've definitely misjudged situations. Um, but it's, uh, you know, just just not panicking and, and overreacting. I think is uh, really good in these combat situations. Uh, and we are very, very short on things here. It looks like steel is a bit of a problem. So I think at this point we can start upgrading some of our production. And uh, sooner rather than later, it may actually be time to start working on some trains. And uh, like I said, trains are going to be a multi-episode uh, topic. They are very extensive, very fun, uh, ex extremely fun. And they're really the... Um, the highest uh, without mods I would say they they're definitely the highest um, throughput type of transport uh, as your base grows bigger you will almost definitely need trains I, I would I would say um, that, that it's just almost a must to get trains as you start growing your base uh, just due to not only the distance of resources uh, away from your base but also just the rate at which you'll need them trains are just going to be your, your best bet by far uh, because they just have such a very, very high throughput um, threshold opposed to um, belts. Now, belts do have a high throughput, especially the higher level ones, uh, especially if you do multiple of them. But uh, in terms of cost, uh, trains are significantly cheaper for the same or higher throughput. Uh, and this is actually very low on ammo, dangerously so. Um, so we are still being attacked here. It's slightly puzzling to me. Uh, Perhaps there's a base right here, is what I'm seeing. There's none in here. Uh, th th this would be flashing red, and, and perhaps, unless maybe they already expanded here, and I, I didn't notice, and maybe the pollution's spreading faster than they can absorb it, but uh, my guess would be over here. Uh, maybe there's a bit in here past the export area. Um, so I do need to keep a close eye on that, but uh, I'm just going to add more iron. Uh, because we, we, of course, are about to expand our steel production, uh, which is going to require more iron. In fact, uh, the problem, the, the lack of steel we currently have, could simply just be to a lack of iron ore, uh, more so than production. So we'll just kind of see where we can go with this. And this is where things get a little tricky. I think it's about time. It's about time to actually be sending just multiple lines this direction. So let's go ahead and work on that, in fact. Uh, this may be the first time we actually uh, take balancers into account. 
Uh, so we are going to send two lines. I think I am still going to leave this splitter here just to kind of balance these two lines. Uh, but I am going to actually send two lines here rather than doing some very convoluted uh, merging here on one line that will actually probably be oversaturated uh, and not actually give us the, the throughput that we need. Uh, so there's no reason really to balance it there since we're balancing it over there. Uh, now we could just merge these two lines, of course. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable. However, I think this is a very good opportunity uh, to show you. Uh, we may actually have a bit of a problem. I'm not sure we're going to have room for this. Let's see if we have room for this. Uh, to show you a balancer. Uh, so I think this is it's going to be very close with this cliff here. Uh, this is about as far back as I can as I can do this. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make uh, what what I call a a four way balancer, four lane balancer. So the purpose of this is to uh, perfectly balance uh, four lanes of input to and then having you know. So if you have four lanes of input that are that are imbalanced, you know, say one of them is 25% full, the other is 40% full, two are 100% full. Um, it'll balance all that to then get an equal a percentage on each output line. Um, however, you can still use this for less than four, which I like to do a lot. So in this case, um, we're actually going to use this four lane balancer for three lanes of input and only two lanes of output. There are balancers specifically for uh, basically each type, uh, uh, each um, belt amount of input and output. So there is like a three lane to two lane balancer. There's a, you know, there's a four to three balancer, except pretty much whatever you can think of. Um, I've not memorized those. I've only memorized the four lane because I just use this the most. It may not work perfectly with this uh, three in, two out, but it's going to be pretty close, a lot better than just me just like merging things like this or something that's very, uh, doesn't really work super great. Um, so what we're gonna do is we place two splitters here. Uh, if we had four lines, you know, one would go here and then one would go right here. Uh, and then we place another splitter here and then we place an underground like this. And then we place one more splitter. Uh, we actually need to extend this out one more. And I think I might, yes, shoot, I'm hitting this cliff. Mm, that's uh, it's frustrating. I think <laughs> we don't have cliff explosives yet. So uh, we may need to actually do this elsewhere. Uh, I'll tell you what, how about well, we just clear a little room here. We bring the three lines up to this point and then do it. I think I think that's a fair bet. We'll need to drop off all this iron. And of course our base is probably halting production at this point due to us, you know, not not having any iron coming in, but that's okay. Uh, man, this, these cliffs are, uh, these cliffs are really, really getting a little bit in the way, huh? Okay, so let's just run our three lines straight through here. Bring this one here. This guy, we're just gonna reroute over to there. And then this one will reroute over to here. And uh, we could just do it here actually, but I think just to make things a bit cleaner, we'll just do it here. So we need two splitters, another splitter. Let's pull these back a bit. And then we need some undergrounds, which are going to go like this. Another splitter in the middle. And then we need belts coming this way that curve in like this. And we're gonna curve them back out around to then match these underground belts. We're gonna put two more splitters right here. And we can then output four belts. Of course, we only have two to output. The important thing is uh, to pull when you only have two belts out or two belts in is to do one from each splitter um, If I do something like this, it's really not gonna work well Because uh, then this one's just being completely ignored So pulling just one line from this and one line from this is our best bet uh, now in terms of how balancers work uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest and transparent with you. I am not entirely sure that's a little bit uh, that, that's a bit beyond what I've investigated within the game. Uh, but we can walk through this just with the basic knowledge we have uh, of, of splitters and, and undergrounds and such like that. So uh, I'm going to just walk through this here with you really quick. Uh, so we have uh, 
two lines here and it's going through this splitter and we're sending 50% down this way and 50% here. So basically what's happening at this point is uh, for hypothetically, if we had this working uh, fully, um, a little bit of invasion here to deal with. Luckily I was over here. Um, there we go. We really need to defend this. Let's put down a turret here. We Okay, so that is, I think over here is definitely where that's coming from. But let's continue our walk through this balancer. Okay, uh, so we have four lines coming in. And from this, from these splitters, we have four lines coming out. Uh, so one line worth is going this way, one line worth is going this way, and then two of them are coming in and kind of being divided into this splitter, okay? And those two are then being uh, continued on to here, uh, just undergrounding here, and these come through and are kind of merged or uh, balanced again. Because uh, the way, because sp splitters can in and of themselves work as a balancer, because splitters will always just send 50% one way and 50% the other way, uh, you know, without any priorities or anything. Um, so this is just kind of a rebalancing uh, thing that's going on here. Uh, same with this. Uh, and then it's sent back out and these lines so that these have been rebalanced on this one and this one uh, for these outside ones and then those all four of those now rebalanced lines are being sent into here uh, for one last uh, kind of division and balancing and then sent out and that's the best way i can think to describe it and think of it myself uh like i said split uh balancers are not something that is that i that i really investigate deeply uh, typically, I really only use this one for most of what I need, uh, and then anything else, uh, you know, because I can use this for uh, two lanes in, two lanes out, three lanes in, two lanes out, two lanes in, three lanes out, etc., up to four and four. Uh, past that, uh, I will maybe do multiple of these, or uh, I will uh, maybe be on robots at that point and not really be past uh, this amount of belts. Uh, so that's uh, th this one is just very versatile. Uh, and as you can see, this is actually fairly imbalanced. So we have, you know, th th this one is actually not producing very much uh, compared to like this middle line, uh, but it is kind of sending everything through as it should be. And uh, we now have two full lines and we're sending these two full lines now to steel. Uh, and it may take a minute to catch up here. Uh, one thing we could do to actually kind of expedite this is we could make this belt, this section right here, all red belt, because uh, it is twice as fast. Uh, and keeping in mind that we actually only really have half of a belt of iron on here. Uh, even though we're sending a full belt in, we only really have half. Um, so the throughput of this belt is actually being cut in half because the other half of this is taken up by coal. Uh, however, now that we actually have flow th for a minute, uh, we can see that this is backing up, which is an indication that we are safe to expand this uh, to some point. And if it runs out, that's fine. It'll just provide uh, whatever amount it can provide. And uh, we can then uh, upgrade the belt or whatever else needs to be done from that point. Uh, so again, uh, we're having one inserter uh, inserting here for the coal. And then on, on the same furnace, we're having an inserter going the opposite direction to output the steel on the other side, knowing that that will always be the case with how uh, inserters work. And I'm just quickly with R just rotating, placing and then rotating here 180 degrees to get it to do that. I'm gonna take these power poles and place them like that. And we'll see if we can maybe even add more past this. We are uh, about to hit the splitter, but that's fine. We can just move this out to here. Uh, and while we're at smelting, one thing I do want to mention, I didn't mention uh, when I brought up this subject before, I think last episode of the time before I did say uh, that upgrading to steel furnaces is really nice because you don't actually increase the footprint. You basically double your production for the same footprint size. Uh, however, one thing I didn't mention just because it wasn't relevant for that, for what I was talking about in that uh, scenario. Um, but now that we're here, uh, if you do upgrade to steel furnaces, 
Uh, again, this needing to be 24 furnaces long on each side of the belt. Uh, 24 furnaces of stone on each side will fill a ye yellow belt. Um, but if you have 24 furnaces that are steel furnaces on each side, uh, you will need to upgrade your belt to red because, uh, of course, you have doubled your production. Uh, so you then need to double your belt throughput. And luckily, the red belt is exactly double the speed of the yellow belt. Um, so that is just something to keep in mind that uh, that you will need to do. And it looks like perhaps uh, we're safe to actually expand this a little farther. This is about as much room as we have here. Could go just one more. Just going to match that. It looks a little bit silly at the moment, but once we get this next set out, uh, we may only be able to feed about two more of these. We'll have to see that there's really not that much left here. Um, so we'll have to see if that actually keeps up or not. But uh, that is a decent expansion there. I'd say we maybe almost doubled that. Uh, circuits are, of course, falling slightly behind due to uh, iron. Uh, we can't upgrade our iron. This is, of course, not 24 long. It's 18 long. Uh, so we could work on that. And, uh, you know, while this may not be quite as exciting as, you know, building purple science or something, uh, this is a very vital part of expanding your base. And, uh, you know, like kind of like with the combat, uh, in a similar fashion, I will probably transition to doing this type of thing, uh, you know, off episode. Uh, but this is really the first time we're actually expanding our existing smelting setup. Uh, so I think it's just important to show. And uh, I'm determining that I need to upgrade it by the fact that uh, there is a bit of a shortage. Now, this is backed up. Uh, iron is catching up. Uh, so technically, I don't actually have to upgrade this yet. Steel was very apparent uh, because we saw that steel just was not even making it really through here very well. Uh, in fact, is that what's actually even stopping this from producing? Yes, as you can see, the steel is just not even making it past this first inserter. Um, so, that, so that was an indicator to me. Uh, the iron actually is probably okay. And now, as you can see, uh, this iron is not actually making it all the way down here. So uh, that expansion perhaps wasn't needed at the time, but it will be there once it is needed. And uh, speaking of expansion, I think it is time we add a little bit more power. Uh, we do need to actually build it uh, somewhere else, though, unfortunately, uh, because we've hit our, our space limit here. Uh, as you can see, the wonderful polluted water, which is a brand new feature in 1.0, you can see a very, uh, very big difference between this and this. This is, of course, quite polluted because it's by our mining and our uh, boilers, which are very pollution-producing uh, heavy. Uh, I'm going to make an underground belt here just so it's a little bit easier. And much like uh, underground, I meant underground pipes, I think I said underground belt. Much like underground belt, though, uh, you can just uh, place this over an above-ground pipe, as I showed you, and it will automatically get rid of the one in the middle, uh, which is very, very nice. Um, so... We need to build this somewhere else. I think I think it's uh, a safe bet to. I think it's a very safe bet actually to just expand it um, this direction. I don't really plan to build much past right here um, on our uh, hub mall. Maybe a little bit. Maybe just one row of assemblers. But that gives us a lot of room. There is a cliff here, uh, but it'll be a little bit before we hit that and by that point we will have cliff explosives i see a huge wave coming it is important to have uh, a, a close eye on your mini map uh, because they will actually very likely destroy this turret uh, which is of course not good uh, we're going to lose some miners here uh, maybe not yeah so the, the, the turret did get surrounded uh, this is much like the other episode i think episode 12 uh, the unexpected <laughs> Uh, it is much like that episode where the you know the game is kind of tossing us around in different directions, and uh, that that is how things will work sometimes. That that is the uh, the game of a Factorio. You know, sometimes uh, someone made a very good comment on that episode. They said this you know it's a good example of how um, sometimes Factorio that the game itself will decide your direction, and uh, that's a bit what we're experiencing right here, where I have plans and the plans change a little bit due to uh, events that happen in the game. So what I'm doing is I'm just building a little bit of a bunker here, or uh, a term people like to use in the community is, is like a pillbox. 
um, I like I like bunker personally uh, is once if I had enough wall I would enclose this and that would uh, at least help a little bit negate what just happened where the turret got surrounded. Uh, now there were actually spitters. I don't. I think you've we've seen a few of them before where they're almost like mini worms um, where the spitters will. Uh, shoot from range. They are, they are the ranged enemy here and, and mobile, unlike worms. And and they do pack quite a punch. And uh, in a lot of cases, they actually can outrange the turrets depending on where they decide to position and path to. Uh, so that can create some problems. Uh, so it is possible this will definitely still get destroyed just by spitters outranging it or not being targeted quick enough. Uh, however, having this wall here will actually uh, quite drastically uh, increase the chance of this turret surviving. Uh, because it'll stop the turret itself from getting surrounded uh, like it just did there and then dying extremely quickly uh, so uh, that that is something you can do there uh, let's go ahead and just expand our power uh, a bit I think this is safe to do like this uh, this is the wrong direction we actually want to go no no we do want to go this way I'm sorry things a little bit reversed in my head uh, do we want... Actually, I think we do want to turn this, though. Just because th we want the coal to feed in from the back of it. There we go. Okay, so we want the coal to feed in here. And we're going to take these steam engines we've made. And very, very much the same setup as we did with our other one. Uh, even, again, as I mentioned, even with medium power pulls, we unfortunately can't power... Uh, well, we could we could actually power. We, we could power, if we put one here and then we put one here and moved this in, uh, we could actually power both of them uh, and then just have this run through with inserters, which I feel like perhaps we will do. It does use more power pulls, so it's a, it's I guess it's a bit of a trade-off of do we want to use pipes and less power pulls or more power pulls and not pipes. Uh, we will have to connect these somewhere. Right here seems appropriate since we're not going to be expanding to the left. Um, so that does make things uh, a bit nicer with the setup. I'm going to just expand this a bit, future-proof it, if you will, a little bit. And then uh, we need to bring this coal over now. Uh, the coal, I, I suspect, I'm, I'm quite confident, in fact, that the coal will not... Oh, yes, let's grab cliff explosives. We need those. Um, the coal will not be able to keep up with this demand. And unfortunately, our coal patch is very small. We can only add a little bit more mining to it. So we're going to have to seek out another coal patch. Uh, we have one up here, and then we have one down here. And uh, I think either one is about equally accessible. Uh, this one is actually maybe farther away because we have to kind of traverse around this lake here, opposed to the straight path of this one. Of course, this one consideration to be made is it is uh, a bit on the opposite side of the base so we would have to train things around uh, but that's not that big of a deal uh, you know trains you can very easily just route far outside your base um, until they get to the point where they actually need to drop off and we are using belt quite quickly so I think it's time that we go in here and we modify this to have a thousand belt opposed to the 500 we were previously keeping and you can see this turret is fairly damaged probably would have gotten a bit more damaged if we didn't have that wall there. Uh, we're going to set this up, and then it may be a good place to call an end to the episode. Uh, despite being thrown in different directions, while we didn't necessarily progress a lot in uh, one particular topic, uh, we did get, I would say, a decent amount done. We expanded our smelting. Uh, we did some combat and cleared out some enemies. We've expanded our power. We talked about balancers a little bit. Uh, and I'm just going to run through here. Now, we could split this and send, like, half this way. Uh, but in my mind, it has about the same effect because, uh, you know, if we split it and, and it, it can't supply it for some reason uh, and say, like, four of these don't work and then also, like, four of these don't work, it's kind of the same as just all of these not working when we have it like this. So uh, this will just take what it needs and then any extra does go down to supply this setup. Uh, and it may be a worry, uh, seem like a worry that these are inserting fuel, even though there's nothing here. Uh, but they won't actually use the fuel. Uh, they used a, a slight amount of it to do their initial warm-up. But at that point, it won't actually consume any fuel until something is here to actually consume it. Um, so we're not really wasting any there. 
so power is now in a much safer spot. Uh, we do need to be aware. Luckily, we are very lucky that we are surrounded by this lake here because uh, I still am not entirely sure if this is connected properly or not. Uh, if it is, we may need to worry. Uh, but even if it is, this is a very good choke point. Um, I was going to place turrets over here, but uh, there's really no... Uh, no access here. I suppose if bases spawn here, they could come all the way over, and that is a consideration based on the weird uh, pathing they decided to take from these bases to attack things over here. Uh, but I would imagine they would still hit um, like our oil first. Oil, oil um, refining is is a fairly high pollution uh, producer, so it's definitely possible that that they would hit that first. Uh, let's just add a few more miners just to be safe here. Uh, we really do only have room for a few more miners as it is. Uh, just add two more, clean up these power poles here a little bit. And uh, just add that there. These are potentially frustrating some people, along with myself. Uh, so, power is in a better spot. Turret is handling itself quite well. We do need to, of course, enclose the back if we had more things attacking, they would wrap around and, and attack behind it, which would be a problem. Uh, and you can see these bodies right here. These are spitter bodies. They look a bit like worms opposed to cockroaches. Uh, and this is uh, this is about their range because uh, this is where they died at. So again, this is within it. it, it, it there, there are cases where they can start outranging the turrets, especially the medium spitters. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, this iron is doing its best to keep up. Steel is producing it. Let's just close out this episode to show you uh, something really useful just with the production graph. Uh, you may have found this out yourself. Uh, but since we can look back in time, uh, we can... Let's just select one minute just so things are jumping around less. And we'll find steel. So we click steel to filter it. And if we look on the uh, 10 minutes, say one hour graph, uh, this is really cool just to kind of see the effect uh, or, or how much of effect uh, expansion did um, for you or, or if you had something that broke and see how that affected things. So what we can see is steel remained constant for a very long time. Uh, this drop down to basically nothing was when we uh, were messing with the balancer and completely cut our belts. And then it spiked back up and you can see now the new constant is a fair bit higher. We were at a constant of about mid 70s or now in the high 80s low 90s so it's not a lot but it did increase by maybe 10 to 15 a minute um which is is something uh so that's uh you know maybe decent decent amount of increase so uh, it's just really cool i think to look at these these graphs once in a while uh, to see how much of an impact your expansions or or rebuilds and, and stuff had uh which is really really interesting, at least in my opinion. And you can look at that, of course, through uh, for, for the entirety of your production, but it's very messy. So if you're looking for something specific, then certainly uh, just filtering it out would be good. And you can just unfilter by clicking it again or clicking this to say, did these to reset all the filters. So very nice. Uh, I believe that is going to do it for this episode. Guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed despite us being kind of tossed around a bit. You know, sometimes that is just inevitable. You, you know, you get attacked. Uh, and uh, things run out maybe when you don't quite expect it. Uh, but overall, I think uh, we're in a decent situation. Uh, I do want to add more labs. Our research is quite slow. Adding more labs, I think, would be a very, very good thing. Uh, I do still want to proceed towards the tanks. Let's let's get our military three queued up. This gives us some new stuff, which we'll look at next episode. And uh, I believe that will do it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found this helpful. And if you did, uh, a like is always much appreciated so other people can find the video and series and hopefully find it helpful as well. And uh, if you're a new player, I hope you're finding it helpful and I hope you're having a great time with the game uh, and enjoying the content. And if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome and feel free to subscribe to keep up with all the new content that's coming out here in the 1.0 release and in the future as well. And I believe that will do it. Any questions and thoughts, leave them down below as always, guys. And uh, until next time, I look forward to seeing you all. And do take care.